Danny, you said you did not want to hire Josh, but at what point uh, during your search did you start to have the conversation with him about this job? Uh, it actually wasn't till recent. Uh, Don probably hates me right now because I, I kind of put them in a, a pretty quick, uh, you know, the more I, I visited with, um, and I say this with the utmost amount of respect, with, with candidates and uh, just vetted uh, the very best coach, uh, not just in a vacuum, but for our set of circumstances here, uh, the, the brand of football uh, that I, I think that uh, uh, my sense is that our, our fans are looking for, but more importantly, what the student athletes are really craving and uh, what, they, what they shared with me. Uh, I, I just I kind of realized that uh, the best option is the guy that I've been working with for the last three years. Up front here to David. Uh, when you look at, at Josh's accomplishments at UCF and, and the challenges that are ahead of you guys here, what sort of things do you feel like are going to translate really well here? Um, and what things do you feel like you might have to change a little bit? Um, I mean, I think a lot of what's been happening at UCF is going to translate really well here. Um, it, it, what, what's been accomplished there by a whole lot of people is, is, is pretty phenomenal. Uh, so I, I see nothing but opportunity here. I think, uh, uh, it, it, last week, the Chancellor talked a lot about building, and uh, we were a part of building something uh, pretty young at, at UCF, and that's going to continue to grow. I know it will. Uh, new leadership will continue that, that path. Uh, we're, we're excited about, I know Josh and I, we talked yesterday about uh, building this thing back to, to where it was not that long ago and, and restoring an iconic brand. Up front to Jimmy. Danny, are you a patient person and do you feel no. like you'll have to show <laughs> patience during this rebuilding of the football program? It's a great question. I, I think uh, I am impatient, uh, but I have to show patience. Our fans have to show patience. Uh, we don't know what success looks like next year or the year after. Uh, this is, uh, there are a lot of challenges. Um, I, I know that our kids want to compete at a high level next year. I know that our head coach wants to compete at a high level next year. I do too. And we're going to go out there and try to win every single football game. Uh, but we have to understand that the challenges uh, that we're facing in terms of uh, the competitive level of where we've been, uh, obviously the investigation and some of the unknowns there. Uh, but uh, I, I looked our student athletes in, in the eyes on Saturday and said, I'm, I'm going to go hire a football coach that I think gives you the best opportunity to win next season. They said, please do not hire somebody that you think is going to be good three or four years from now. I said, I won't do that. Uh, so we want to win right away. But we, we all need to be uh, have some things in perspective and understand that uh, Josh and the staff he's going to build, uh, staff he's going to put together, excuse me, uh, their focus is going to be on being competitors from day one, but also building this thing for the long haul. Like I talked about last week, uh, consistently competitive and build it in a way where it's, where it's sustainable, uh, build it the right way, uh, uh, do all the things we've talked about, being student athlete centered and uh, extremely competitive. Brent and Trey. Yeah, similar question to what I asked, Coach. From your perspective, hiring him as a coordinator to be a first-time head coach, how have you seen a just change over the last three years as a head coach? And, and secondly, was there anything in this search that maybe surprised you or you found to be unexpected in, in the short, quick search that you got done? Uh, I mean, you learn a lot through every – experience, life experience, professional experience. I, is Josh a better coach than he was three years ago? Heck yeah, he's grown a lot. Uh, I've grown a lot as an athletic director. I think the experiences we go through um, uh, make us better. Uh, this press conference is gonna make me better. Uh, but that's why, you know, as we go through a search, we, we, we value those experiences and uh, we value uh, you know, people that have, have been a head coach and have, have, have kind of walked in those shoes. Uh, I, I lost track here. On this, on this quick search, Days. Was there anything that surprised me? Yeah, you know, going talking about experiences again, like going through several searches. And what I've learned is you really can't have expectations because you don't know where you're going to land. As I said at the beginning of this, I did not expect to hire uh, Josh Heupel, not because I don't think he's one heck of a football coach. I wouldn't be standing here if I didn't uh, think that. Uh, but I, I really didn't want to do that to UCF. And I, I, I'm going to have. Uh, I know I have some people mad at me right now. Uh, I love y'all. I promise. I love UCF. I want the very best for that place. 
uh, that's been so good to me and my family and I uh, love the people there. Uh, but searches are fluid and uh, you need to take all the information you can. And as I said last week, uh, I, I am far from the smartest person in the room, but I was extremely close to this and I'm moderately intelligent and I worked really hard to make the best decision that I think is in the best interest of, uh, of Tennessee, knowing everything I had learned uh, from student athletes, from our leadership, uh, from uh, information I, I gained from, from uh, key alumni and, and, and donors and, uh, and just try to make the, the right fit. It's about fit. Uh, and sometimes that's a, that's a, it's not just a location thing, it's a status of the program thing, it's a status of the roster thing. Uh, it, it, it's a leadership thing. It, it, there's a, so many uh, 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 factors that go into fit. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, in, in my assessment, this is the very best fit for us. Uh, Josh Heichel is going to do a heck of a job as our head football coach, and I couldn't be more excited to have him here. Trey and Blake. Danny, when you went through this, this coaching search, the NCAA investigation that's currently ongoing, a lot of Tennessee fans now think, okay, you have a football coach. Now what's next when it comes to the violations? How do we handle this? How do we build this football program with this cloud hanging over? What was the response on the trail to the stuff like this that has been coming up? And, and how did you think Coach Heifel took it when you told him maybe the ramifications? Because you know, I had the same questions uh, two weeks ago when I was assessing uh, coming to Knoxville and being a part of what I mentioned last week, which the long-term unbelievable opportunity to restore this brand and do some really great work here. This is a short-term problem. And I think our leadership has done a phenomenal job of identifying the issue, working with, no offense to any other law firm that works with the NCAA, but I think the very best law firm that, that works on these sorts of things with the NCAA uh, and being extremely proactive uh, and very transparent with, with NCAA staff. Uh, so I think we're, we're attacking it head on and, and above board uh, and by doing it that way, I think we're going to get through it. Uh, I say fairly quickly, fairly quickly in comparison to uh, maybe some, some other uh, examples that we've seen uh, it, you know, historically in college athletics. Uh, this is a short-term issue, and uh, we expect to put it in the rearview mirror uh, as soon as possible and, and continue to, to, to move forward. But that doesn't stop us from building our long-term vision now and for starting to build the foundation now uh, while, while managing, uh, I think, uh, our new football coach called it a speed bump. I like that. It's a speed bump. Blake? Yeah, Danny, you mentioned in your opening remarks that, that Josh was your top candidate. If he was your top candidate, why didn't the search start there, and, and why did it ultimately turn in that direction? Because I didn't have a top candidate at the beginning of the search. I think I said uh, last week, you guys are all candidates. Uh, I, I don't start a coaching search with a specific end game in mind. I, I just, I don't think that's smart. I, I think that I, I need to, uh, I learn uh, as I go through a search. I learn before I start interviewing people. I didn't interview or talk to a single candidate until I had gained as much information as I, I could as until I had uh, met with our student athletes and uh, learned a ton from them. Uh, but then as I go through those interviews, I learn from those interviews. And I can, uh, I pick up some things. I mean, we interview good people. They're smart people too. They know more about football than I do. Uh, so I, I learned about their opinion of our situation and I could kind of compare all those conversations and all of that information led to uh, the, the decision that I made uh, and I, I couldn't feel better about it. We'll take some virtual questions. Mike Wilson. Yeah, Danny, on the, the investigation, did you try to talk to the NCAA to get any, um, any extra insight into maybe what punishments could await? And then were you also aware at any point previously or during this of Tennessee fans' love of tracking planes during a coaching search? I know that they tracked a, a plane that uh, took my family back. My kids had to go to school, so I will say uh, that that had nothing to do with the search but I'm pretty sure that they pay, paid attention in class this week. So I want our fans to, want our fans to know that. Uh, uh, I, I went off on a sidebar. I lost your first question. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. Did you attempt to gain any extra insight from the NCAA or the legal firm into the, into the potential ramifications before you hired Josh? I, I didn't talk to the NCAA directly. I don't think they need the fundraising 
marketing focused, hard charging AD. Uh, I wouldn't understand what they're saying to me. People way smarter than me talked to them and briefed me. So I was able to talk to coaches uh, about uh, the set of circumstances that we're forecasting. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. Uh, but our, uh, uh, we have uh, between the, the, the outside council we're working with and our uh, compliance folks that have a ton of experience in that area, they're having those conversations and educating me about it. Mike Bianchi. Yeah, Danny, how important do you think it was for Tennessee to act quickly to hire you and then for you to act quickly to hire Josh? And secondly, uh, Scott Carr has been named uh, your interim replacement at UCF. Uh, what does he bring to the table? Uh, I, I think it was really important. I think it's a strong sign of, of, of smart leadership. And actually, uh, John Hitt, President Hitt, the retired pr president at UCF, did the same thing. Hired me there to then hire a football coach. Uh, we've talked quite a bit over the last couple of weeks about the alignment of our leadership. But, uh, you know, good leadership, strong leaders hire people to do their jobs. And I've received nothing but unbelievable support throughout this search and uh, since uh, uh, I raised my hand to come come here to Knoxville and uh, I think hiring an athletic director, hire a football coach is, is the way it should be done. Uh, and uh, I feel unbelievably honored to be empowered to uh, uh, manage this athletics department, lead this athletics department into hopefully a, a really prosperous and bright future. Uh, Scott Carr is a talented leader. I'm excited for him. I talked to him uh, just a short while ago. Uh, UCF has an incredibly bright future, Mike. I know you know that. Uh, it's really hard. Uh, uh, it was really hard for me to leave. It's really hard, I'm, I know, for Josh to leave. We talked about it. Uh, we love that place, and uh, I know it's going to continue. Uh, it's going to continue to to grow. Uh, but uh, Scott Scott's going to do a great job for him, and I'm going to help in any way I can. Uh, President Cartwright is an unbelievable leader, uh, and I told him last night anything that I can to help in this transition. Um, uh, uh, now that I'm through the search, I'm 100% uh, on board uh, to uh, help them uh, in any way I can be in a, uh, of assistance. Two more virtual questions. We'll go to Gustavo, WTK Radio. Danny, it's a pleasure speaking to you. What is the responsibility that Josh brings here to Rocky Top, especially being hired after, you know, the previous four coaches didn't work in the last 13 years? What is his responsibility to bring this program back? I told our team this morning, uh, and it, you know, I talked, I mentioned earlier about restoring an, an iconic brand in college sport. I think any su successful organization that starts internally, it starts with those kids. Uh, and it starts as we build, as he builds a staff that grows to that staff. And then it grows to the rest of our athletics department and uh, all of our supporters, our university leadership, our fans and donors. Uh, but you got to start at the most important is, is with those student athletes uh, and make sure that we're doing the right things every day uh, uh, to, to maximize who they can be and that we're recruiting at, at the right way to, to bring uh, new kids in to be a part of what we're doing. Uh, that's what we did at UCF. You can't start a marketing campaign uh, to sell out a stadium or to win football games. You got to be really good and really true to uh, 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 walking the walk uh, uh, and, and uh, following through with what you say you want to be. Uh, and, and I know that's what he'll do, and that's his ultimate responsibility. Two more questions, Kellyanne, virtually. Hey, Danny, uh, Kellyanne Stitch with WATE TV here in Knoxville. Well, in your introduction, introductory press conference, you preached positivity to fans. Um, with the new hire as head coach, there's been a, some negative responses on Twitter, but what is your message to fans today? Uh, some of you are awesome. Some of you are failing right now. Uh, why would we be negative? Uh, the, the, the future of this place is unbelievably exciting and positive, and uh, I, I can't, I, I couldn't be more excited to be here. Uh, and I, I see nothing but uh, great days ahead. Uh, so I, I know that uh, uh, our, our fans are extremely passionate. I love that. Uh, I can't wait to get to, to know many of them and, and work with them. I can't get to know them all because there's so many of them. Uh, but the idea of turning your passion into something that you love into negativity. I don't understand that. Uh, but I, I think, uh, this athletics department has been through some, some challenges. And uh, uh, I, I, again, we have really great days ahead. And I, I think that, that, that uh, uh, people will see that and, and start uh, having some more fun uh, with their Vol fanship. One last question here in the room, Jimmy. Uh, 
COVID has certainly created a lot of financial hardships on athletic departments. There are assistant coaches who have at least a year left on their contract. Will Coach Hype will be asked to keep anybody, or does he have a clean slate on who he can hire on his staff? Uh, well, I mentioned earlier about our leadership empowering me to run our athletics department. I don't know anything about running a football program. This guy does, and he's got a proven track record of doing it. So uh, I, uh, all those decisions will be his as our head football coach. That concludes today's press conference. Thank you very much for joining us today.